Look, I know what you're saying. 410 attack power? That's impossible, right? Well, watch this. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and Hylians of all ages, it is a magical day in Tears of the Kingdom. The game has been out not even quite a week and a half yet, and we have officially cracked the highest damage weapons in the game. Yes, I'm sure you've seen tons of high damage weapons. There are lots of particularly good ones out there, but this is the best, and it's not even close. Why, you ask? Well, it's a perfect combination of about five things coming together to make the absolutely undeniably perfect death machine capable of fitting right in your tiny little hands. So today we'll be going over what the weapon is, how to get it, how to make it as strong as we have, and how to get this stuff for yourself. Past this, we'll also talk about some alternatives that are still higher damage than anything else, but a little bit easier to use, and how to get those too. First off then, what is the weapon and how have we achieved this silly amount of damage? It's a simple Knight's Halberd. These weapons are generally just all over the place, not hard to find, and once you progress far enough in the game, you can actually see cleansed versions of these with not only higher base attack power, but also higher durability too at the Phantom Weapon Guys in the depths. Near the beginning, those Weapon Guys will only spawn with cleansed rusted weapons, then as you get more done, they'll spawn with cleansed Traveler's weapons, so on and so forth until eventually they'll have cleansed Knight's weapons. My save is still relatively early on as far as main progress goes, so I only have gloomed versions of this weapon. The base version that you'll find around the place on the surface, but that just goes to show you that even with this one, you can absolutely destroy even a red Lynel in just a few hits, if you set it up right. What makes this weapon special then? Well, two things. Firstly, all of the knight's weapons have a special effect, where when you are on one heart or lower, they do double damage just straight up. This includes any fused parts on the weapon as well. The knight's halberd in particular will always come with the critical hit weapon perk too. This perk makes it so the last hit of any light attack combo will be a critical hit, which is double damage, and this also applies to the last hit of the charged weapon attack, and also the last hit of a flurry rush combo. Already you can see the start of this, which is playing on one heart, then hitting the final hit of a combo is four times the damage of the weapon, just those two things combined. But don't worry, we'll be talking about some really strong variations on this later on that do not require playing the game on a single heart forever. On top of those stats, we also have weapon fusion. Most people would tell you that the strongest weapon fuse part in the game is the silver Lionel Saber horn, and on a surface level, the right, it has the highest pure number on it, but technically they are wrong, because the best technical weapon fuse part in the entire game is actually the Mulduga Jaw. Technically correct. The best kind of correct. The reason is because it procs a certain special effect. That special effect is Bone Weapon Proficiency. A set bonus effect on a couple of armor says that multiplies the damage of any bone weapon by 1.8 times. When you fuse a Mulduga Jaw onto a weapon, it turns it into a Mulduga Jaw weapon, which counts as a bone weapon and activates this bonus. In case you're wondering, no, none of the Lionel parts count as bone weapons once you fuse them on. It is this. This is the highest one that you can really get. It's the highest fuse power bone part that is acquirable in the game with one exception, the Gibdo Bone for 40 attack power. But that breaks in one hit, which would be a very hollow victory for me to say, hey, we can achieve over 400 attack power, but it breaks after one attack. That would be entirely unusable as an actual weapon, so instead we're going with the Mulduga Jaw for 32 attack power, keeping it realistic here. Then on top of that, we have a 50% attack power boost from all three ranks of the attack up skill. You can get this from food buffs, so it's super easy to get and keep active as much as you want. And for anyone asking, no, the food buff attack up skill does not stack with the armor skill attack up. If it did, then that would be the de facto best way to play for offense, but it just simply doesn't work that way. I'll be showing in the background while I'm saying this, be hitting a Henox with attack up from one source, and then attack up with both sources active at the same time, and as you can see, it does the exact same damage, and so once again we round back to bone weapon proficiency. With that then, let's add all of our bonuses together here. 6 attack base on Knight's Halberd, 32 fuse attack power on Mulduga Jones and that puts us at 38 attack power times 1.8 because this now counts as a bone weapon and that puts us at 68.4 attack power times 1.5 for eating triple attack up food, and we are at 102.6 attack power. If you drop down to one heart, the Knight's Halberd doubles its damage, which puts us up to 205.2 attack power. Then the critical hit weapon perk doubles our damage on any combo finishing hit, so the stable attack power of every hit with this weapon in this situation is 205.2, but the final hit of any given combo doubles that up to 410.4, an absolutely massive number within Tears of the Kingdom that is 
simply unmatchable in an actual usable situation. Well, except for one thing, as I mentioned earlier, you can find the cleansed version of the Knight's Halberd later in the game. That weapon has 18 base attack. Factor that into the same calculations and you get right around 500 attack power. So as a late game weapon, this gets even more insane. All right then, with all the math out of the way then, let's simplify the process of how to get this stuff and then also talk about the alternative uses of these buffs. For the Halberd itself, there is a particular one that we want that tends to have the critical hit weapon perk more so than the others, even though all of them have a pretty high chance of getting it. So head to the Forgotten Temple in beneath the Tabantha Snowfield. You can enter here by gliding down from above and then just follow my path, gliding through the upper areas of it from pillar to wall to pillar to wall to get further in. Then right around when you get to this place where I have a pin on the overworld map, drop down to this little dip here to find a little alcove on the back side with a chest in it that has this specific version of the Halberd inside. Again, there are quite a few of these around the map. This is just one specific location that you can get one with the skill that we want. For bone weapon proficiency, you have a couple of options. There is the base version of the Evil Spirit set, which has this set bonus just by default. And then there is also the Radiant set, which gets this set bonus at level two upgrade. This video here already on the channel will show you how to acquire either of these sets, no problem. Evil Spirit set cannot be upgraded, so it is locked to 12 total defense, which is obviously a fair bit lower than you probably want to be as far as your defense number. So the Radiant set is a good secondary option that reaches 20 defense for each armor piece at max upgrades. You need to hit level two upgrades on each piece for the set bonus to actually work. And for the first upgrade, it takes 10 luminous stones, one bacobbling guts and 10 rupees per armor piece. The second upgrade is 15 luminous stones, two mobbling guts and 50 rupees per armor piece. For the Mulduga jaw, you have to, well, kill a Mulduga. Surprise, surprise, I know. If you head to the Taruma Dunes area, west of Gerudo town in the greater desert region, you will find one roaming around. To kill a Mulduga boss easily, stand up somewhere safe off of the sand, fire an arrow down into the sand, and then when the monster jumps up to attack, fire a bomb flower at it to knock it down and stun it. Once it is downed, run up and attack it with a melee weapon. When it gets back up, go back to your safe spot, repeat this process until the boss is dead. Nothing really changes. Easy, right? The best part of this is that it actually sort of doubles up. Those are all of the things that you need to put together for our base knight's halberd build, which is super high damage, but it requires you to play at one heart consistently, which I am well aware not everyone wants to do, of course. I don't even really want to do that. The alternate options, though, are out there, and they are the Scimitar of the Seven and the Light Scale Trident. These are both legendary weapons and require you to have defeated one of the temples for each one, but they have high base damage and great special effects that work wonders here in combination with the same principles that we're using on the Knight's Halberd. The Scimitar of the Seven is 28 attack power base, but also doubles the power of anything that is fused onto it. Do that with the Mulduga Jaw, which normally is 32 attack power, but doubled here is 64, and that puts the weapon on 92 attack power just from that. Count in the times 1.8 from bone weapon proficiency and the times 1.5 from attack buff food, and we still reach an extremely respectable 248.4 attack power total. That is the lowest maintenance version of this general build, but there is an alternate weapon that reaches higher power with a bit more careful usage in the light scale trident. This weapon is 22 attack power base, but it doubles the power of the trident itself and anything fused to it when Link is wet. The power unlocked from doing the Water Temple dungeon can be used to make you permanently count as being wet and thus keep this bonus up 100% of the time. So 22 attack power plus 32 from Mulduga Jaw for 54, double that to 108 for being wet, times 1.8 for bone weapon proficiency and times 1.5 for attack buff food for 291.6 attack power, which is insanely good for something that doesn't have a lot of active requirements. As far as how to get these two weapons then, the Scimitar of the Seven requires you to have completed the Thunder Temple, and the Light Scale Trident requires you to have completed the Water Temple. To get the Scimitar, head to the Jewelry Store in Gerudo Town, and you'll be told that the owner is missing, but she went out to the west in the Taruma Dunes. Funny that, isn't it? Head over there and you'll find that she is trapped on an island due to a nearby Mulduga, the same one that I told you to kill earlier on. Once the Mulduga is dead though, she will thank you and go back to the store, talk to her here afterwards, and she promises to make you the scimitar if you bring her four diamonds, ten flint, a Gerudo shield, and a Gerudo scimitar. The easiest place to find these is out on the eastern side of the desert, right by the Siwakama Shrine. A fair bit south of them are these little circles on the map. These are actually sand pits if you go up to them in-game, little holes in the desert. We are going to drop down into two different holes for this, technically. The first one is over here, middle left on your map, the one that I've marked. Get to this hole, drop down inside of it, and you'll find a chest buried in the sand. Use Ultra Hand to pull it out and open it up to find a Gerudo shield. Then head immediately east, essentially right under
either this one of the sand circles above. When you get to the pile of sand that's under here, again there will be a chest stuck in the ground, pull it out, open it up, and you have the scimitar. As for the diamonds and the flint, feel free to collect those just sort of naturally on your own if you want to, but there is a handy dandy duplication glitch that you can use if you have even one of either one, so just get this out of the way and get yourself this weapon super quickly. As for the light scale trident then, again you must have completed the water temple for this, once you have, head to the general store in Zora's domain, and nearby you will find Dento over here. He'll ask you to collect some things for him, and in return he will give you the trident. The things that he's after then are 5 flint, 3 diamonds, and a Zora spear. We already went over the trick for flint's diamonds in the last section, but an easy place to get a Zora spear is at the upland Zorana Skyview Tower. I've already done this so I can't show you, but literally outside the door of the tower is a Zora stuck in the sludge. Use a splash fruit or any source of water to free him from this, and he will give you a Zora spear as a reward. With that, head back to Dento and you'll have the spear for yourself. Simple as that. Now that you have both of these items, a question that you may also be wondering is how to repair them when they are low on durability, and that is easier than you might think. These weapons count as legendary weapons, which means that if you try to use a rock octorock to repair them, it will not work. But if you instead fuse them onto a basic weapon so that they are technically the fuse part rather than the weapon itself, the rock octorock will actually fix them up perfectly and easily. So first up, use the vendor in Terrytown over here on the eastern side of your map to remove the Mulduga jaw for 20 rupees. Then fuse the weapon onto anything basic and use an Octorok to suck it up, spit it out, fully repaired, easy does it. And that just about does it everyone, everything covered here, the easy way to hit over 400 attack power in Tears of the Kingdom, as well as a couple less dangerous ways to hit 250 and above on a regular combat basis. Not special situations, just consistently being at 250 and above attack power. Nothing requiring the last hits of durability on a Royal Guard weapon or anything ridiculous like that, just essentially a baseline power of the weapon when you're using the right armor and eating the right food, simple as that. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope this gives you a greater appreciation for the systems at work in combat within the game, and I hope you enjoy abusing these systems the way that we have to deal insane amounts of damage per hit. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye